Hey everyone, thanks for your time. This past week was a news and notes week. We got some interesting imagery and some notes, but the big questions about the big picture are still front and center for Artemis. We're still waiting to hear about what NASA decides with the Orion base heat shield, which will have a big say in when Artemis 2 will happen. Artemis 2 has to fly before Artemis 3, but there are other prerequisites like the lunar lander and the lunar surface spacesuits. With SpaceX digging into a public power play with the Federal Aviation Administration over regulations, we'll have to see what happens to the Starship HLS schedule. But that seems to have receded into the background behind the regulatory conflict. In the meantime, there was a crew module adapter sighting ahead of the Artemis 3 Orion service module mate coming up. I'll take a look at that and an update on the Mobile Launcher 1 schedule as we wait to see when verification and validation testing at Launchpad 39B concludes and the ML rolls back to the vehicle assembly building to get ready to begin stacking the Artemis 2 vehicle. Whether or not stacking will begin anytime soon is likely dependent on a heat shield decision, but the rollback still has to happen for stacking to begin. Actually, let's start here with the Orion environmental test article which is being tested at the Armstrong Test Facility in Ohio. That facility, which is a part of NASA's Glenn Research Center, was formerly known as Plum Brook Station. A set of images of the ETA were recently published showing that article in a launch abort vehicle configuration. The Orion launch abort vehicle would only fly in an emergency abort. It consists of the launch abort system and the crew module. In Mode 1 abort cases, the LAS abort motor and attitude control motor fire, and simultaneously, the crew module is separated from the rest of Orion and SLS. The two motors expeditiously get the crew module as far away from where the abort was triggered as possible before they burn out. The other LAS motor, the jettison motor, then fires to separate the LAS from the crew module, and then the spacecraft's flight computers begin their descent and splashdown sequence, deploying parachutes for a soft water landing. We have seen this fly during the two abort tests the Orion program carried out. The first was a pad abort test in May 2010 at the White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico. This was during the several month period where the program was terminated as the Constellation Crew Exploration Vehicle and then came back to life as the multi-purpose crew vehicle for the independent Orion program. The second test occurred nine years later in July 2019 with an ascent abort test at Cape Canaveral in Florida. Instead of aborting from a resting position at basically ground level, the AA-2 abort was triggered when the flight control system sensed the combination of Mach number, dynamic pressure, and angle of attack conditions. In both cases, the test focused on the launch abort system and a boilerplate Orion crew module was used for the test. However, vibroacoustic data was also recorded during the AA-2 test in particular. Artemis II is the first crewed mission for Orion, so the spacecraft has to be certified that it handles the required abort loads. The testing in Ohio will help verify that the flight-like structures and systems operate as intended when subjected to abort level vibrations and acoustics. In the pictures, you can see the LAS test article stacked on the crew module in what appears to be an acoustic test cell. The crew module is the flight article that flew Artemis 1 in the cislunar distant retrograde orbit in late 2022. After the mission, the spacecraft was reconfigured at Kennedy Space Center prior to shipment to Ohio to support this testing. The aforementioned heat shield was removed for post-flight analysis and a structural test article of the titanium carrier was attached. In these pictures, we can see how the four retention and release mechanisms are used as attach points for testing. In these pictures, we can also see that the LAS only goes up to the jettison motor. It is missing the forward interstage and attitude control motor. It's unclear whether those weren't yet installed or were not needed for these tests. The testing is required to complete design certification of Orion prior to Artemis II. During the past week, NASA KSC Public Affairs also posted news and imagery of more verification and validation testing of Launchpad 39B and Mobile Launcher 1 systems. As noted in a recent interview with Exploration Ground Systems Senior Vehicle Operations Manager Cliff Lanham, another ISVV6 test was conducted. ISVV stands for Integrated Systems Verification and Validation Test, and ISVV6 was verifying the modifications and upgrades of the high-speed camera systems. 
Those are used to image the ignition, liftoff, and climbout of SLS with Orion. During the Artemis 1 launch, some of the cameras did not work correctly, and those fixes are being tested now. This was another test run, the last plan before the ML rolls off the pad. PAO posted a blog on Tuesday, September 17th that provided some details of what changed between the test runs. Another emergency egress system test was also performed on the 17th, which PAO reported the next day on September 18th, also providing a video. We are ready to go. If you can go ahead and give us a quick countdown before your release. Get basket release on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. <laughs> This provided a previously unreported or underreported detail about the launch sequence, which is that the four baskets will essentially be wired into the firing chain. As a part of the launch release of the umbilical arms, which is triggered in the milliseconds after liftoff, the baskets will be released and run down the slide wires to the terminus area. This will help mitigate exposure to the blast from SLS as it lifts off and climbs away from the mobile launcher. We can see as the video begins, one of the vehicle stabilizer arms retract as it would when it is released around launch commit and liftoff. EGS is wrapping up all of these verification and validation tests between the Pad 39B systems and Mobile Launcher 1 systems. Once those are complete, the ML would roll back to the VAB to get ready for stacking the Artemis 2 vehicle. I asked PAO about the latest estimate for the timing of that rollback and here's that response. It says, quote, teams have completed major testing of the new emergency egress system at the pad and are underway with final validation testing of the crew access arm. All preparations are in place for an early October rollback pending outcome of final testing, unquote. So the rollback now might be a week or two later than previous, but still in the same ballpark. And the mobile launcher isn't the big schedule question mark at the moment. I'll come back to the big picture for Artemis 2 in a little bit. There was one other picture that KSC PAO published during the past week of the Artemis 3 Orion crew module adapter. It was taken a few weeks ago on September 4th, just after the European service module arrived in the Orion assembly facility at KSC. The image shows the CMA prior to mating with ESM3, which we last heard was expected this month. The CMA has walls or like face sheets or face covers installed for flight but here we see the aft walls installed and a couple of forward walls. The outboard walls and most of the forward walls are missing, which allows easier access to the internal wiring, fluid lines, and avionics boxes, some of which we can kind of see here. This is a shot of the Artemis 3 CMA structure back in January 2022. The structure starts with an inner ring, which used to be a composite inner wall. A few Orion structures were reverted from composites back to metallic forgings that are machined down to exact dimensions, such as the CMA inner wall. Around that inner ring are longerons and intermediate frames. This is a shot of the EM-1 service module in 2019 before it officially was renamed the Artemis-1 service module. It provides a better view of what those walls look like when installed, particularly the outboard walls and the forward walls. I got a shot of the mostly completed CMA when it was wrapped up for the media event over a year ago in August 2023. This shot, which was recently released, was taken at the beginning of September, and with the arrival of ESM3, the crew module adapter is going through final preparations for mating those two elements together. After the CMA and ESM are bolted together, the CMA wiring and fluid lines will be connected to the ESM with the latter requiring some orbital tube welding in the clean room. Looking at the big picture, it was a relatively quiet week. The most pressing decision is about what NASA chooses to do with the Orion heat shield. 
To recap, the original Constellation Orion heat shield design was an upscaled version of the one for the Apollo spacecraft. The Orion outer mold line is basically an upscaled version of Apollo's. By the time that the first Orion flight test occurred in late 2014, NASA already decided to change the heat shield design from the Apollo honeycomb structure, where each cell was individually filled with avcoat material, like Apollo, to one where the avcoat was fabricated in large blocks that were then glued to an underlying structure. As this old NASA feature from September of 2015 notes, that was done not just for manufacturability reasons, being cheaper to build, but also because of quote-unquote structural mechanical challenges, as it was described to me a couple of years later in 2017. This graphic from a NASA technical paper shows the high-level assembly sequence for the heat shield. There's a titanium support structure that physically attaches to the crew module primary structure. That has a composite skin over it that the Avcoat blocks are bonded to. The heat shield didn't fail on Artemis 1, but it didn't behave on its first flight test as predicted by analytical models. As the OIG report in May says, quote, although the agency conducts extensive system testing pre-flight, there are many attributes of spaceflight that cannot be replicated on the ground or adequately emulated in modeling or pre-launch testing, unquote. The questions are about whether NASA better understands the risk after investigating the root cause, and is it acceptable enough risk to fly with. Past performance does not guarantee future results, as the saying goes. NASA is trying to determine how to proceed, presuming that they better understand what happened on Artemis 1 after this year and a half and more long investigation. All the programs are busy as always, but not a lot of updated status has been provided recently. One bit of information was that the Mobile Launcher 1 rollback to the VAB is now expected in early October. In a vacuum, where there was no decision to make about the Orion heat shield, and stacking for Artemis 2 were going to proceed expeditiously, a rollback in early October would suggest a stacking checkpoint meeting by Halloween, and maybe starting to stack the Artemis 2 SLS solid rocket boosters by that time, or maybe November. That would more or less be the earliest that could happen now, but as we've been reporting, NASA wants to have a decision on how to proceed with the Orion heat shield before they start to stack the Artemis II vehicle. If stacking were to start in the middle of the fall, somewhere between Halloween and Thanksgiving, one of the questions now is how much schedule margin remains for the official September 2025 target. There may not be very much, and as I reported in the video about Artemis II alternatives, even if NASA decides to continue with existing plans, they may already be too late for next September. So the heat shield decision is the most conspicuous question for Artemis II right now, because the schedule becomes more and more speculative without much certainty about even the rest of this year, 2024. So even though we don't know when stacking will begin, the SLS hardware is basically ready and waiting. The situation with Orion isn't clear though, because of the heat shield situation, but also with the assembly and test schedule. On Friday, September 20th, NASA announced that they were adding five additional CubeSats to Artemis II, beginning with one from Germany. It's not quote-unquote too late to add them, and the mission has plenty of margin because it's only supposed to do a lunar flyby, but maybe there is more time to rerun the launch numbers with this late addition of more small sats if the target date is moving to the right. Having said that, an obvious question is if the Orion stage adapter for Artemis 2 is already outfitted to support five additional CubeSats, or if that's a change that needs to be implemented. For Artemis 3, the Orion heat shield situation could have a big effect on that schedule too. Maybe the Moon to Mars programs can turn around between Artemis 2 and Artemis 3 in 12 months, but that's probably a minimum amount of time. If Artemis 2 is delayed even a few months, the EGS, Orion, and SLS programs will still likely need that 12 months of time to complete post-flight analysis and reviews and make adjustments to hardware, software, and other tools. So the Artemis II target date is a growing factor in the timing of Artemis III, or at least the official target date for Artemis III. Right now, that's September 2026, which is now only two years away. The other critical work will be finishing production of the next Orion and SLS vehicles for Artemis 3, and finishing development and test of Starship HLS and the Axiom Lunar Surface spacesuits. 
All of that will need to be completed in less than two years. Right now, this power play between SpaceX and the FAA about regulations is escalating. Those politics don't seem to be interfering with day-to-day -day work at Starbase in South Texas, but from a high-level point of view, the regulatory compliance issue could affect overall Starship development progress, like the Orion heat shield issue hangs over the Artemis II schedule. Eventually, those big flight tests we were anticipating for 2025 need to happen to make progress towards a lunar landing. The longer that these things remain watch items, and either unanswered, unresolved, or both, the lower the chances that Artemis II and the on-orbit Starship demos might happen next year. Thanks for watching. Click on the like button if you found this video informative. As always, the images in this video are courtesy of NASA, except as noted. Also, special thanks to my breathing coach, Teddy.